Hello, folks. Well, I have finished another galaxy, and it's M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy. And I don't have my Sequence Generator Pro in PhD2 session, and that's because I ended early. I thought I was going to have one more day of capturing to record that stuff like I normally do. But when I thought, well, you know what? I've got between L Pro and RGB data, I have around six hours of data. And I had 13.3 hours of data on this galaxy last year. If I combine it all together, I'll have, you know, somewhere over 19 hours. And I go, what am I doing? Why am I still capturing? And I just ended it. And now let's just see what I can put together. So because this galaxy is rather small in my field of view, uh, my focal length is 952, I... I wasn't too worried that my rotation would be far off from last year um, because uh, no matter what, I'm going to fit the galaxy in the picture. And this is what it looked like between this year's data and last year. This is my luminance and L Pro data combined. So I had about, uh, I, didn't, I didn't add it all up, but I had about at least three hours of L Pro data this year combined. I'll have the final numbers at the end. I didn't add it up. It combined with probably seven or eight hours of luminance data from last year. So this is L Pro plus luminance. Now it's not just luminance. Last year I was doing luminance RGB with a two inch CLS filter in front of it. So it's really L Pro plus luminance plus CLS. And you can see that my rotation was pretty far off between this year and last year, but it didn't matter. Like I said, I was able to easily fit the galaxy and even preserve this small galaxy in the final picture. So I was happy with that. So let's take a look at my um, final crop data here. Now I didn't run drizzle like I did with the Sombrero Galaxy and the Owl Nebula to bring things closer in and make them bigger because this was a pretty small galaxy in my field of view and it would have benefited from drizzling. The problem was drizzling seemed to be explo exposing my, my flaws in the picture. The background wasn't great and uh, drizzling just didn't look good this time. That was disappointing, but I, I thought, nah, I'll just go without it. Um, so, sorry, no drizzling, you failed me this time, but that's okay, let's let's just see what I've, I've got here. Now, this is my L Pro data cropped, so that looks pretty clean. Now, let me show you something here, though. This is what my red data looked like this year. This was only about uh, an hour of red data, and last year's red data looked pretty similar. It wasn't that perfect. The background wasn't perfectly smooth, but when I combined this year's red with last year's red, look how clean that looks, huh? <laughs> this is cropped, of course, because of the rotation issue, but still, it, it, I was surprised how clean the data looks between crop. Uh, this is probably an hour of red plus last year was uh, maybe nine 90 minutes of red. So combining them and integrating them all, um, it, it came out really clean on the left. Now, of course, if you want to use last year's data, you have to preserve your calibration frames, especially the flats, and that's what I do. So um, I integrate, um, I don't integrate, I, I calibrate um, both sets separately, then I can integrate them as one filter, and that's what I do here. So, and I did that for each filter. I, they were calibrated separate, separately with their own calibration frames and integrated together. So that's how the red looks. And all of my data surprisingly looked clean. Um, this was how green looked, and that's how blue looked. So I was pretty happy with how this all looked. Like, not bad. Huh. And I'm still puzzled why drizzling looks so bad. There's probably some features I could have done or something extra, but it, it, it just made the, the background very uneven when I drizzled. So anyway, okay, let's move on here. So I didn't run any ABE or DBE on the individual filters, but so I just did my um, RGB combine, and that's how that looked. Uh, it didn't come out as clean as my Sombrero Galaxy, but um, that's okay. I'll, 
I think I can work with this. And then after I combined it, um, the next step was um, I ran a DBE on it. And that's what the DBE did for me. It, it cleaned up some of the gradients in the background there. And um, after I did the DBE, I did a manual color calibration. I must be doing something wrong with that photometric color calibration tool, photometry, whatever it's called. I can never get the name right because it, it, it's just producing weird results. So this is a manual color calibration. Um, it didn't do much for the, the background, but it, I like what it did to the galaxy itself. I, I got better color. This, this I, I definitely prefer the one on the, the left here. And let's look at my next data here. So this is my RGB data after I ran ran it through the histogram and made it nonlinear. And this is the LPRO data after I made it nonlinear. I didn't run any ABE on it or DBE. And I keep calling it LPRO, but really it's luminance. And the luminance equals my LPRO data from this year and my LUM and CLS data from last year. I should just call it luminance because that's really how I'm using it. So that's how that looks. And I did a little work on the RGB. Um, and that's what the RGB looks like after I ran. Um, I did run um, an, uh, an automatic background extraction to try and clean up the, the background a little bit. And I did some saturation on the galaxy itself on the left here. This one on the left has the, the automatic background extraction and the saturation. Um, all right. And let's see. What did I do after this? Um, oh, now I added the, the loom data to it. And that's how that looks. So you can see the, the loom um, definitely helped uh, with the noise in it. It made the galaxy a little stronger. I don't know if you can tell. Did it add more definition to it? Let's get them close. It definitely made it more full, so I can definitely um, work with this galaxy on the left a little easier than I would be able to with just the RGB data. And that is it as far as my standard processes go. Now, like I say before, after this, I go off in the wilderness. Um, I start trying everything I run. I try, um, uh, I didn't do anything with the stars. I, I thought the stars were fine. I didn't try to shrink them with that um, morphological transformation. I think that's what it's called. Um, I, I didn't try, I didn't do any clone stamping to fix any errant bad stars. Um, I, I, I sharpened up the galaxy, I, uh, I made the background darker, I tried to desaturate the, the background a little bit, um, and I, let's see, let me just show you what the final image looks like. I mean, I'm, I, I maybe I'd, I'd, I'd try the HDMR, there's just, I don't save all the different steps at this point, I just keep trying stuff, and that is what my galaxy, the end result looks like. This is kind of, uh, uh, well, that, that's, that's what I came up with. From, from the one on the left to the one on the right. And I I tried to compare, like I said, I go to Astrobin because I'm never sh sure how dark to make the background, but I thought this was fair the way I did it. Like I said, you don't want it too dark where it looks fake. You don't want it too light. Um, the star color is not too bad. I noticed the galaxy was a little purpley, bluish from what I've seen other pictures. Um, I don't know if I really nailed the color, um, but I, I, I like the color of the, this. This, I think that's a galaxy on the end there, trailing off. And I got a little bit of the gold, or the the glow. I preserved that a little bit. I wish I could have had more. I've seen other pictures have more. And I definitely preserved that galaxy up there. And there's a little galaxy right, right here, or a very distant one, but it is there. I'm glad I didn't lose it. So that's that's what the, the, the final picture looks like. Um, I went through a lot of different versions. But I'm pretty happy with that. And let me show you what I did last year. As long as I think I improved from last year, then I'm good with it. Um, and that's what it looked like last year. I really, I mean, 
let me just show you one thing here. This is the first version I uploaded into um, Astro Bin. And let's go back here. Um, I don't know if. Uh, hang on one second. I'm going to pull up this picture by itself. So this is the the one on the left is the first version last year that I uploaded into Astro Bin, and you can see. Um, I got no of that fiery glow from that little galaxy on the end there. I hope that's a little galaxy on the end there. I, I should have done more research on the Whirlpool galaxy. It's such a well-known thing. You would think I would know this, but I, I believe it's two merging galaxies. But look at it, it's completely devoid of the orange and the yellowish data. And so um, definitely picked it up in my new one. Now that was the first version, and I, I uploaded it because I knew it didn't look right, and I totally forced the issue there um, but it looks like it worked where it was a little more natural it, um, in this picture on the the right that I did this year I think I don't even think I had to touch the red or the, or the at least I didn't touch the the red curve I think I just increased the saturation on it and that's what turned it that color so and that was that version and then I think I got another one here you know, if I'm not happy with something, I keep uploading new versions. So that was my final version from last year. Um, I think I absolutely like the one. I mean, some people, I know I can't read people's minds, and they may prefer the one on the right, but I, I think I absolutely like the one on the left better. I, I don't even think it's close. That's just my opinion, of course, but... Uh, um, I am calling it done and um, you know a year from now I may look back on this I'm gonna say what was I thinking this is terrible but for now I'm pretty happy with it and I'm gonna wrap it up and uh, that's all I got folks thanks for watching and I'll see you later